Welcome to the Continuing Winemaker Series here at the Wine of the Month Club, and we just have a great pleasure to have Alessandro Gallo here from the Castello de Albola uh, Winery um, in in Chianti Classic. Yes, right? Chianti so, Classic. And you may have caught the conversation prior to the start of the film here that you know he's got a Gallo last name. Yes. <laughs> so you said famous, you met, you met what's her name? Say. It, it, uh, what was her name? Zina? Alice, no. No, my surname? No, the girl that you met her. Ah, uh, Gina. 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 Now, who is she? Was she part of the... Ah, uh, she's a part of family, yes. But uh, I don't know in, in which in which way. How it works. Pro- yeah. probably, probably she's the daughter. Yeah, probably uh, somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a prolific yeah, uh, yeah, wine yeah, family yeah. in America, I don't know, right? I, don't know. <laughs> I have no relation. I'm, I'm not <clears> well, you know the picture downstairs of my father and I? Yeah, we used yeah. to have all kinds of gala wines there. <laughs> uh, yes, a big I, jug, uh, right? <laughs> I think it's the biggest estate. The company, I think it is, you know? yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're not here to talk about them. We're talking about you guys. Exactly, exactly. So Alessandro came to uh, Castel d'Abola um, like 15 years ago. But before that, you were in Piemonte. Yes, uh, right. I was I was born and I grew up in uh, Piemonte, in a city that's called Aquiterna, but I studied in Alba. Mm-hmm. That is uh, very close to Lange area. That's uh, famous for Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo. Yeah, Nebbiolo grapes, uh, Nebbiolo variety, and uh, most famous uh, probably wine in Italy today that's called Barolo. Yes. And uh, but uh, anyway, I work in Piemonte after my study. Uh, I degree in chemistry uh, after before winemaking school in Alba after chemistry in a, a, at the college. I work in Piemonte uh, since uh, 14, 2014, 2000, sorry, 2004, and uh, I moved in Toscana. So, I, I mean, I, it's fascinating to me, interesting. You go from, I mean, the Piemonte region and the Barolos and the Nebbiolo and Lenghe and Asti yeah. and all those famous places. Yeah. Uh, and is it quite a different environment in the wine world to come to Tuscany and grow Sangiovese? Yeah, and- it's it's a, it's a two region in Italy are two regions very famous for red, uh, very very famous for wine in general. Uh, Piemonte uh, produced the the great great red like Nebbiolo and Barbera too, of course. And uh, and and Toscana, it's a uh, king of the grapes. Is Sangiovese? Of course. Everybody asked me the difference uh, the, about this. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to do that, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, Sangiovese and Nebbiolo, and uh, it, it's difficult for me to speak about that because I born in Piemonte. Yes. So I, well, we we're not. Gonna... I love Nebbiolo, of course. I love Barbera. I love the the elegance of uh, Piemonte wine. And it's really true the Piemonte wine is really, really elegant and really, really adapt to age in the ter- time. But it's also true that uh, Sangiovese is a smart guy. It's a uh, Sangiovese. It's uh, more versatile for yes. me than uh, than Nebbiolo. Sure. Nebbiolo or like or, or love or hate. Yes. Because Nebbiolo is a difficult wine. He's yes. a king, and uh, sometimes he's a strong character. Sangiovese is smarter. It's like a Toscan people. It's really? <laughs> well, that's interesting. It's like the yeah, people. it's like, like a Toscan wow, people. Like Nebbiolo is closer than like a, a Piemontese people. Yes. But uh, Sangiovese is a smarter guy. He's nice when he's young because he's fruity. It's everybody like the Sangiovese after one or two years, but can age can mature if uh, the grapes is good if the wine is good can arrive uh, a very to be uh, very very early think at Brunello uh-huh. Brunello di Montalcino yes, probably beautiful. is the one <clears throat> the most famous wine in the world yep. and uh, because that is a Sangiovese that mature and is as so smart to arrive at everybody yeah because everybody likes Sangiovese. It's difficult to find the people that don't like Sangiovese. It's true. And yeah. Brunello is Sangiovese Grosso, which is the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, larger, yeah, yeah. The yeah, older yeah. cousin, I guess. Yeah, of the, I, Chianti, the Chianti Classico. In America, for sure, the, the, the Sangiovese grape in all its different forms, Chianti, kind of Classico, Reservas, are more popular than the Barolos and the Nebbiolos. Yes, the, the, yes, for sure. Yes, for sure, because also... Uh, probably it's more adapt uh, at the, the tasting. Of, I think uh, you're right. Yes, uh, uh, because if you taste Nebbiolo, a young Nebbiolo, you say, "What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can't drink that." Yeah, uh, it's true. If you, you take me, 
I grew in Piemonte and uh, I have my family vineyard. I produce a little bit of uh, Barbera. And uh, I remember very well when I, 40 years ago, the Barbera that was in my table uh, of my father gave me the, the, to, to, to taste, to drink Barbera. It's acid, impossible yes. to drink. Very hard to drink. Very hard to drink. Piemonte was the, it's Piemonte have wine that is more particular, more with more character. Yes. Uh, that is for it, me. In relation it is a reason though why when we, when I, they come a lot, I taste a lot of uh, Piemonte wines here. And they always seem to be bottle aged. They always seem to be yes. five to seven years yes. older. Right? Yes, yes, And they yes. still have a not. I'm not going to say acidic. It's not tannic acid, but there's still a bright acid. Yeah, the fresh the wines. Yeah, yeah. And but what I found the Pimonte brokers are very, very proud of the wines. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, right. Because we are really proud. Yeah, which is great. It's yeah, great. Yeah. So you come to tu you come to uh, Tuscany. You come to yeah, San yeah. <laughs> Was that the, your first job in? Yeah, I, I am um, the the Zonin, uh, the family Zonin is the owner of the Castello di Albola, and I met Gianni Zonin, the president, uh, the past president today, and it was the president in uh, 2004. It, he asked me to 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 get to he asked me to to go in Tuscany and to 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 manage Castello di Albola, and uh, I told that Gianni Zonin, Mr. Gianni, I. I don't know is where is Castello di Alba, <laughs> and I'm sorry. Oops, uh, oops. I uh, I had 33, and uh, uh, I'm very proud about that because Gianni Zonin uh, gave me the keys of this castle, yeah. this, the keys of this winery at 33 years old, and so it's it's uh, today is uh, past the time, uh, and uh, sometimes I think I say. Alessandro, you were you were you was crazy. You were crazy because, uh, uh, but I accepted and uh, I crazy arrived. Good. Uh, yeah, I arrived here. Yeah. So I don't know. It's uh, one of the biggest estate in Chianti region, uh, under thirty hectare of vineyard, and I don't know in acres. That's two point five acres or okay. two point two five acres. So. And uh, nine hundred hectares of uh, three hundred of uh, of in nine hundred hectares. Uh, yes, in so total. That's, uh, that's like almost two thousand acres. Yes, it's huge. Yes, it's huge, <laughs> so huge, very huge. One of the the biggest in the area, and uh, we work a lot in that fifteen year to improve the quality of uh, of our wines. Uh, of course, also the hospitality, the agriturismo, the it's the state growing a lot of part in uh, but me personally i always say that i'm a winemaker so i say that uh, first of all we have to think at the quality of wine and the quality of grapes and quality of wine because people like that yes. uh, after arrive everything yes that's uh, right it's important to communicate to to do the interview to 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 <laughs> <laughs> it starts in the wine yeah it? yeah but it's important to 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 do the the good wine and uh so we renovate the 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 vineyard today the it's uh, planted for 90 95 percent at san Giovese grapes with the quality system so very dense uh five thousand plant for hectares and uh, with a guyo system that to to grow 5000 plants a hectare yeah. so that's 7000 plants an acre so it's you know reasonably dense but yeah. um i think most important is the guest house where's your guest house for yeah. people to visit no, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes we have a we have a two villas <laughs> Uh, two villas. One of is beautiful. Is that uh, two villas that we we rent the guest house, yeah. and we have also accommodation in the, in the hamlet, because it's a hamlet. It's yeah. a borgo, and uh, you can visit us uh, every day, and you can taste the wine, and you can uh, do the tour of the old cellar. It's uh, it's also an aspect that and uh, an idea that. Uh, Growing the last ten years, also in general in Tuscany, but in Castello d'Albola well, a lot. A good yeah. question. Bordeaux, Burgundy, yeah, you, you sort of need to have an appointment. You can't yeah. just, you know, yeah, America. Know, you go to Napa Valley, you drive the street, you pull into the driveway, and you go taste wine. That's also it. in Castello d'Albola. Is it? okay. So yeah. you pull up. Uh, yeah, the... you come because I'm, I'm many <clears throat> many American people come in uh, Chianti in Tuscany yes, in general, course. and they like to come, and uh, we are. I I I think we do a good job. Uh, there is uh, many people that take care of the 
the, 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 the visitors and uh, th this different uh, solution or uh, just tasting yes. or tasting right. a tour, a tour or, uh, yeah. if, if, if you if you go for an appointment of course it's much better because you can uh, do experience and also today in uh, well, we start last year to do to serve a food we have a, a, a oh, really yeah, wow. yeah 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 it's a it's not a restaurant but uh, it's uh, you do the pair, we pair with the wine. Yes. It's a nice, nice. So that's nice a good spirit. question. I, yeah, I want to get to, I want to get to the farming techniques a little bit. I want to get to this conversation about Chardonnay, which, yeah, which yeah, yeah, intrigues yeah. me to no end. Yeah, that there's yeah. Chardonnay yeah, in yeah. County Glasgow, but um, the foods of Tuscany, yeah, with yeah. the grapes. Versus the foods of Piemonte and the grapes. Is there a difference? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, it's another difficult question. <laughs> okay, I know. So, well, let's, let's, the reason I bring that up is America, we don't have indigenous wine. We don't have grapes that were made for America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of us that we put together is either from what Europeans do or we make it up. Yeah. Right, because we don't have this stuff. So it's it, in Italy. <clears throat> food is different from uh, north and south. Uh, in everywhere, every region, every city, every town have different food, uh, because it's the story of Italy. Uh, and uh, and of course, all food of Italy is good, uh, because it's interesting for the past, for the history. Piemonte is closer to French. Piemonte is closer to uh, to north, and uh, normally in Piemonte uh, we have a cu cuisine uh, cuisine mm -hmm. that is more uh, uh, fine, probably yes, more uh, rich in terms of ingredient, for example, more rich in vegetables, and more and normally it's more uh, you find in the Piemonte the possibility to uh, combine more. Uh, uh, ingredients yes. uh, at, at the, in, in, inside uh, at the, uh, the plate. So more complex. A little bit. A little bit. So we know uh, that uh, Catherine the Medici. Uh, yeah. This, uh, yeah. Uh, the fork. Uh, she brought, but she yeah. brought cuisine to yeah. France. Yes. Yes. She was yes, Italian. Yes. Right? Yes. She yes, brought the Italian yes, cooks to yes, France. Yes. Right? And start to use the fork. Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, because we're clean. So tell uh, me, go ahead. Uh, and I finish. This is Piemonte. The, the, the Tuscany, the Tuscany cuisine, it's uh, so great for me for the raw material. Uh, Tuscany is very famous for the meat, for the bread, for the olive oil, for the pasta. So it's great in the ingredient. Yes. So they have, uh, is Tuscany have the uh, uh, incredible ingredient, very easy very easy cuisine yes simple normal, cuisine very simple cuisine and people like that people like that yeah they do uh, but it's uh, sometimes a little bit <laughs> more heavier no well, that, if, yeah. if you can uh, you know if we have a, an Italian friend of mine a chef came to America and when he makes his pasta dishes and they're so simple the ingredients yeah. but they're so flavorful yeah, yeah and it's so much to do with the ingredients right yeah. in that the is the story of italian cuisine yeah. that is the story the ingredient the freshness of the ingredient and also the possibility to the possibility to have a lot of ingredients because if you think italy start from germany yes. in trentino yeah, Adizio, right, yeah. and arrive in africa uh, because sicily is a uh, <laughs> Very right, mild, yeah. very close to <laughs> Africa. So the possibility to have uh, many ingredients and to combine in different way. I told you, Piemonte. I born there. I yes. know the the elegance of Piemonte cuisine, and uh, and also the the versatility of Piemonte cuisine. The use of vegetables. Tuscany very strong in the raw material. So you do uh, you eat a beautiful. Uh, Tibon, yes. for example, that's great with wine or pasta with the ragu. Or, uh, yes. yeah, that's it's Tuscany. That is so Tuscany. We're in Bolzano. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you know, based on what you're just saying, you head south and you head towards Africa, or you get different cuisines. You head north, you get different cuisines. Those borders, but in Bolzano. Yeah. It was very Austrian yeah, blend. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was like yeah. schnitzel and pasta. Schnitzel right? and pasta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's very true. 
And uh, also in Alto Adige, in Bolzano, there's a great, great cuisine, but it's closer to Austria. Right, yeah. so you get those flavors. And there is, there, there is no vegetables. <laughs> this is very fat, uh, very uh, high in uh, carbohydrate because it's cold. Right. Yeah. It's like uh, uh, Riesling and Dolcetto. Together, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is fascinating, this picture. You can't, I'll show it to the camera for a second. But um, when you got there, we're... Was everything dry farm when you got there, or did you guys yeah. start that? Yeah, it was dry farm when you got there. Yeah, it was was um, there there were there was uh, irrigation fifteen years ago. There was. Yeah, okay. there was, but we uh, in uh, is a ten years that uh, we stop, and uh, we today is dry, dry. We don't use uh, irrigation because uh, we uh, work in the soil. And we, and we manage uh, the, the, the 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 vineyard to don't need the, yes, the right. irrigation. That is our philosophy. So we like that the roots uh, uh, goes deeper to to find uh, the the water to find the nutrient. We are in a bio organic conversion. We finished this year the the the, the, the conversion to organic, and we. And that's in uh, in Castello d'Alpola, in uh, help to know better the consistency of vineyard and soil, because yes. uh, because uh, normally people speak about vineyard, but in uh, in for for us it, it's a combination. There's this there's the soil, there's the vineyard that yes. are on to yeah. top. So it, you can consider one thing. You have to consider. Both of the things. I agree with that. It, oh. It's there's a whole movement. I don't know if it's worldwide, but in America they're using this term a natural wine, which has no legal definition. Yeah. But it it exactly. tends to point towards less intervention. Yes. Yeah. 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 Though I, I don't believe adding. My personally, I don't think adding water is unnatural, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it is a different process, and yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm fascinated with the fact that the deeper the roots have to go, the It'll be more complex, You'll, and you should taste that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should yeah, you yeah, not? Yeah. So I can see why, uh, if you irrigate, yeah. the, the the roots stay at the top. Yeah, they have yeah, a place yeah, to yeah, go, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, 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 exactly. And uh, about natural, um, the, the, there's a big discussion uh, at home. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> so. because uh, what means natural? Uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, not anything, you know. <laughs> Be me. I'm. I do natural wine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and if you say natural, that means there is why that is not natural. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, <laughs> but but uh, but uh, that's uh, it's. It, I'm agree that natural could be the idea to to have the the possibility to 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 grow the vineyard without. Uh, too much helping yes, of a human right. uh, resource. Uh, I don't know if that's natural, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, biodyna- I mean, I agree. Um, that, yeah, biodynamics. Biodynamics is another level. Yeah, it's another, it's another, story. Right. another it's story. story. It's another story. It's another story. If you people, I tested in Sonoma County uh, three days ago. Uh, I was here. A uh, beautiful wine that was biodynamic. Yeah. Beautiful wine. So b- the wine. It, for me, it was good, good and bad, but the, to be bio, organic, biodynamic is a way to arrive there. Yes, right. It's a way. It's You're not. Right. It's, it's, it's not the final. It's not the the final. Uh, is the quality. Right. Is the taste. Yes. The, is the taste of wine, not You're the right. quality. Is the, the, the is the taste of wine, but to arrive at this taste, you can you can take different way. You can take. I the, agree. I know. I ate the people that. Because uh, me am um, biodynamic, it's uh, no good wine. No, right. that is not as I think the consumer, it's uh, of, of uh, it's uh, confused. It's confused. Yes, it's confused. My daughter lives in New York. Yeah, she's a bread baker. Yeah, she, head baker. She says, "Dad, I have to take you to Brooklyn. There's a really cute wine shop there. It's about the size of this room." And it's all organic biodynamic. So she says, I want to taste that Sicilian near Diablo. I okay. Now I'm in this business, I do this every day, I buy a lot of wine, and I grab the bottle. I didn't look at the price and I put it on the counter and it's seventy five dollars. And she says, But dad, it's organic and I think it's biodynamic too. I go, Okay, Lisa, fine. So we buy it. We take it to the hotel, undrinkable. Undrinkable. 
She, but you know what she said? But it's biodynamic. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this is a wrong. This is a wrong sentence. I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> I want to be able to drink it. It's undrinkable. Yes, it was terrible. So uh, that is um, <clears throat> that is uh, what I, I want to say. So I think it's. A, I think the. Exp I think wine and, and this the passion for wine and I have I tell this story a lot, but the experience of wine is not how cheap you can buy it and whether or not it's made biodynamically organic. What it's supposed to do is how you feel when you drink it exactly. and when you're with your family or your friends yeah. and it's, you're not going to you're not going to swirl the glass around and say, oh, I got this for $5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're going to yeah, swirl yeah. it around and you're going to smell it and you're going to talk about it yeah. and it's going to evoke conversation. It's gonna, yeah. You may not know what it, you're smelling. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it should stimulate emotion because I think it's a connection to the soil. Yeah. It's a, no. it's a re beer's not a connection to the earth. No, no. Bourbon's not a connection no, to the earth. No, no, no. Grappa, no. I can't drink it. No. So, <laughs> but you know, it, it's a, it, wine is emotion, and uh, wine is a connection with the terroir. Because if you have, if you say, if the winemaker don't do that, uh, okay, you can reply that my wine in everywhere. Me, I'm obligate to do a wine that. From, it's just from here. Yes, and uh, it's from that soil, that land. And because you're expressing that, that. It is expressing that because that, it's uh, un unique. Yes, unique. Uh, you can do that, or here uh, you can do that. So you can't, you can't duplicate it anywhere exactly, in the world except exactly, right here. Exactly. So you, exactly. ninety-five percent Sangiovese. Yeah, Paul Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yeah. Chardonnay in Tuscany. What yeah, is that about? Yeah, because uh, because this is a a very nice exercise. It's a highest vineyard of uh, Castello d'Albola for sure, but probably also in Chianti region. It's a seven hundred meter on the sea level. Wow. Yeah, it's very very on top. Yeah, that's up. That's up there. Twenty one hundred feet. Twenty two hundred yeah, feet. Yes, that's uh, high. Yeah. Honestly, there the Sangiovese. Dormatur, yeah, uh, because it's a lim The limit of Sangiovese is a six hundred. Really? Yes, okay. yes. After uh, it's uh, difficult. It's very cold. Uh, yeah. And Sangiovese is a red, and need. It needs. It. Okay. Yeah, Sangiovese, Vrada of Castello di Albola. It's uh, you feel the freshness, but over uh, start to green to be green. So it's not good. So. The decision of uh, of Chardonnay is a white that don't need a lot of sunny time, hot, warm, and uh, it's incredible because there we have a three hectares that produce a uh, ten thousand bottles. Really? Yes. Wow. Ten, yeah, ten thousand bottles. A lot. For three hectares, it's not That's a lot. Too bad. Yeah, no, not so bad. And uh, it's a it's a not oaky or just a little bit, a little touch of oak, fifteen oh, percent. Yeah, for oak fermentation, and the rest is stainless and steel. It's a character of variety Chardonnay, not uh, not Good. oaky Chardonnay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> variety Chardonnay, very acid, very very vertical in the mouth. But very, uh, very, ex um, very. Um, uh, can I say uh, with the um, expressive of the grape, yeah, the grape character. Yeah, yeah. you and do malolactic the, there. Uh, half or half. It depends. We decide vintage by vintage, but normally it's necessary half malolactic. Yeah. In in a, a in, 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 in exactly because it's so acid and yeah. sometimes sometimes I say. Uh, uh, because sometimes the winemaker has put on the in the other part of the desk and go to the consumer, yeah. and so I do malolatte. <laughs> but but sometimes I have to say no because uh, it's the character of the the chardonnay. So it has has the uh, Italian consumer received yes Tuscan uh, chardonnay? Yeah, well? yeah, we will start uh, probably uh, in uh, also in USA, but at that time it's Italian consumer. Yes, it's not Treviano, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, so this is the this is the Chianti Classico, 2016. Yes, yes. yes. And so this is the first Chianti Classico, the first level of the Chianti yes, Classico. Yes, uh, the Chianti Classico have a three level, and there's a Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico Reserva, and Chianti Classico Gran Selezione. So a three level mm -hmm. of Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. Gran Selezione is the last one, last uh, la last level, and uh, in general. Uh, we mm, we do uh, our interpretation of the tree level, 
we we have the single vineyard that represent the Chianti Classico Gran Selezione. So just uh, wine that from uh, one wine, one, one vineyard. That's it for us is Gran Selezione, Chianti Classico. The, the down is a Reserva, is a selection of Sangiovese from different vineyards. And not just these vineyards, but all it, over. Uh, all Part over. Of the whole... All in this, all in the property. Yes, all property. All in the property. We produce wine just from our just property. From, I see. Okay. And the third one, on the, the entry level, the Chianti Classico, this one, is all of the rest. That represent the, the blend of all of vineyard of... Uh, of, of Castello di Alba. It's very, you know, this is very elegant, actually. Yeah. One of the most I've had. In Chianti Classico, yeah. for the consumer, there's Chianti inside a smaller district called Chianti Classico. In, in the old days, and I, and I don't know the current rule, but isn't there 13 grapes or 9 in grapes? A, or In a Chianti Classico. Yeah. There were, uh, in the past, there were uh, many varieties, and there were also uh, white. White, you could put it, right. Yeah. It was at Trebbiano and Malvasia. Uh, disappeared in 2006. Uh, the story of Chianti Classico is a story that uh, uh, born uh, 300 years ago, the Bettino Ricasoli with the... Ricasoli. Uh, yeah, Ricasoli, uh, Castello di Broglio. Yes. And uh, the story, the, appel the 300 years ago, define the area where you grow this wine based in Sangiovese and Canaiolo, Colorina, some other variety yep. that's called Chianti, okay? 300 years ago, so a very old appellation. What's happened? That uh, in the past, 56 years ago, the, you know very well in the United States, Chianti Classico was, was a wine for table. Was a wine for every day. It was a wine that's uh, uh, the, you remember? In a fiasco. Uh, fiasco, exactly. <laughs> so so uh was a wine that was not uh, exactly uh wine to age or important but it was a wine to drink so the consumption was a project consortium chianti 2000 in the end of 1990 uh okay uh, said said that we have to consider to to change the way a little bit of uh, of uh, of Chianti of Sangiovese. So at that time introduce the possibility in the, the in the blend to introduce the possibility to use uh, the international variety. Mm -hmm. uh, for 15% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, Petit Verdot, blah blah blah. Uh, so international variety. But at that point also that here's he, the consortium start a uh, research with the clone. So the new uh, the clone are the the variety of Sangiovese mm -hmm. that arrive uh, at uh, better maturity. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, after that, in two thousand six, uh, the consortium stop the the stop the possibility to use white variety. Because uh, wanted to give to give more consistency, more body, yes. more full body at the wine. So raise the level, the whole level of the district and the perception to the consumer that we're doing something here. Uh, I didn't understand. But they want to r raise the quality of the wine yeah. and the way the public viewed the wines. Yeah, they've become. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Today, okay, okay. Today, this work after uh, twenty years. Uh, I think uh, bring uh, brought the, the the perception and the quality of wine higher much much. But what's <clears throat> happened for me in the last it, ten years ago when the consortium or fifteen the consortium gave the possibility to put uh, international variety. Many producer use that possibility. And what's happened that the it was too much. Oh yeah, <laughs> the the changing. Yes. and between Everybody was super tough. Fiasco, yeah. ex <laughs> okay, all right, you understand. But today is changing again because that uh, way is quite finished. Yeah, really. and everybody come back at the Sangiovese. Yeah, that's great. And that is great. 
because it belongs there. Uh, yeah, right? Yes, yes, yes. And the, and today, and today, I see that also a country like USA that normally like uh, wine more full body, yes. uh, like the expression of Sangiovese. Well, That's for me. It's uh, it's a, important. I made an important point. I have good friends. They just built their house. They put a big cellar, and it's very difficult for me to get them off of Napa Cabernet. Yeah, yeah. because they're just used to this volume of character and yeah, yeah. depth. When there's so many elegant wines around the world, so yeah. I slowly bring them something, yes. and they go, "Oh, yeah. this is really good." Yes, yes. I, they yeah. go, "Give me a case of that." So it's uh, lighter. I'll do that with these. It's lighter. There is not so alcohol, and so, because Sangiovese born in Tuscany, yes, and so he grow in Tuscany. Uh, Sangiovese know very well Tuscany. This is a Reserva. Reserva 2014. Uh, yeah, 2014. It uh, was a uh, uh, fresh uh, vintage, and there is nobody in wow. this reserve, but it's just uh, fin and just uh, verticality. No full body wine. Huh? It's not, but it's uh, reserve is what two years in oak. Uh, less. Eighteen. Uh, we do fourteen, fifteen months in, mo in oak, and the rest in bottle. Yes. We prefer to age less in the oak and more in the bottles today. We prefer to sell wine that is ready to drink. Color is beautiful, mm. and the nose is just. Yeah, it's uh, a tertiary. It's arrived at the t tertiary at yeah. the bouquet. There's, a, there's an elegance about your wines that is fascinating to me. Mm. They're soft. But they're complex. There's things to taste, and and they finish nice and long and, and full of flavors. So mm -hmm. the color is almost deceiving. Because yeah, the color is a Sangiovese color. It's no color, but is the color mm. is the color of the the wine. Mm. And I, I I know that people want uh, dark or ink. Yeah, right. But this is a color That's of Sangiovese. Is. Yes. <laughs> this is color of Sangiovese of Neb. If you think the best grapes, Nebbiolo too, exactly, right? exactly, and Pinot, yeah, Pinot Noir, Noir yeah. is uh, it's exactly the same. But color is color. Uh, you have to drink the wine. Not so if you did put Cabernet and Merlot in here, okay, well then. <laughs> no. So what the other five percent besides the Chardonnay? Do you Caniola? Uh, we we had the kind of yeah no no we had the we had the we had the piece of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. That we use to do a, um, yeah. a super Toscano, super Toscano. It's a, it's a, it's called Acciaiolo. Mm -hmm. It's the name of the wine. It's a, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon in that case, because we want to give a evidence that this is another wine. This is another style of wine. This is a Cab style. That's a wine, yeah, right. That's it. And here is a totally Sangiovese because Sangiovese is a, a style of the terroir. So. That's the, the one of the differences between this and your the regular one is this long finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got finish. tons of flavor. It's, to it. uh, <clears throat> the the area normally it's a uh, it's a sweet tannin. That is a Gran Selezione Santa Caterina. Uh, the first vintage. This is not right because uh, the, okay, this is fifteen. Okay, this is a for the Santa Caterina. It's a uh, it's a single vineyard, and the first vintage was the thirteen. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, but they have not a name yet. I we jammed the fourteen. Yes. We jammed the fourteen, and we do the fifteen. I so you. this is a fifteen Santa Catarina oh, single wow. vineyard. Yeah. And which vineyard is it on here? This vineyard. This vineyard here. Wow, the nose is different for sure. Yes, the, the nose is different. Mm -hmm. It's more fruity in that case. Wow, that's amazing. So the soil, I mean, there's a, a big difference between these three wines, right? Yeah. So, and it's all because you're concentrated here on the north side of the valley. Mm, 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 mm. And the soil there is that much different than the rest. Yeah. And the, the, the agronomists of Chianti call that the confusion of Chianti. The confusion of Chianti. If you, if you, if you take the soil of, in our estate, you find stony you find the galestro, you find the albereza, you find you find uh, argilla, uh, lime, you find uh, many many different soil, many many different soil. 
a lot of different exposition mm -hmm. at different altitude ah, because funny. they stayed uh, go from 700 meter on the Chardonnay yeah. to 450 meter wow. to Cabernet Sauvignon. Of, that's uh, of, a difference. That's a difference. That's a big difference. So where's this altitude? It's that? a 500 meter. Just rich and flavorful. Yeah, and it's more deeper. rich. It's another clone that it's uh, because also the clone of Sangiovese give a difference. Fascinating. And so this is before you name. This is after you named the wine. Yeah, exactly. Santa Catarina. Yes, exactly. And the 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 first vintage of that wine is that 2013. We we put no name in that case. So this is the first vintage. Yes, of, of Santa Catarina. Selection yes, only, yes, yes, but yes. Under the yes, Castel d'Ambo yes. label. Yeah. Grand Selection. Same vineyard. Yes. Where's the uh, Alessandro vineyard? <laughs> <laughs> Alessandro live here. Oh, that's, oh, that's not a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> Alessandro lives in the in the castello in a Ooh. very nice apartment. He yeah, this nose. It's Ooh. more close, of yes. course. Right. Thirteen. Uh, it's a good vintage. That extra couple of years of bottle age, though, I get mm. it. Fascinating, fascinating wines. In the in the case of thirteen, you feel the tobacco, so yes. you start to feel the the blood in yes. the Sangiovese, wow. but always the tannin, the tannin is always sweet, and that is a which is in Castello di Albole is in Radda in Chianti, very fashion now for wine, a very important area for wine in Chianti region, Radda in Chianti. In Radda, you feel. You you taste a nice combination between tannin and acidity, and that mix sometime in Radda I have a good combination to uh, it means equal tannin and acid, equal uh, drinkability. Yes, because people don't speak uh, also about the drinkability of wine but also that is a character that is important no, it's, an important character. it's very important character because me i don't like to taste i like to drink the wine and uh, and so so the drinkability tannin acidity together for me in that area I miss that i can't tell you how many wines i taste uh, I tomorrow know. I taste uh, all day uh, probably 60 to 75 wines wow but many of those are fun to taste yeah but, but not to the drink, drink. bravo right? and, and <laughs> a lot of times I have a, another wine guy in here who as soon as he says he loves it because it's so interesting I won't buy it because if he thinks it's that interesting then the regular consumer is going to have a hard time with it because he's looking for all the extra stuff wow. that, that wine people want to taste that the consumer doesn't understand right yeah. So this particular one just it's fascinating to me because it's you know another the sweet tannin was a yeah, great sorry sweet tannin. No, no. it's a great comment I've not heard that and I get it no, I understand no. what you're yeah, saying yeah 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 and also another characteristic of that wine is uh, that is a food friendly Chianti mm -hmm. Chianti Classico I, we have to speak about Chianti Classico but there's a there's a big difference um, between Chianti big and difference. Chianti Classico Chianti Classico is an old region. It's an old region, so a historical region of production. Five village, very small region in the center of the area. Chianti is a big area. Yes, huge. But area. nobody knows. There is one thing to say, and that people have to know and put in the mind. The only, the only thing that recognizes the Chianti Classico to the Chianti is that my family name. The rooster, <laughs> the rooster is the black rooster. Is the icon the gallo, gallo, the gallo nero. Do you know the story about? No, it? no. I don't know. I've never understood why there's a gallo nero on the label. Oh, there's <laughs> a funny story. The story is uh, that there are two: the Florence and Siena. Yes, have to divide the land, the territory. Yeah. Okay. Put the flag. Okay. So how? How is possible to do? Italian people, <laughs> 13th century. <laughs> so many years That's ago. Funny. That's funny. So they say that the two horses, Chevalier, start one from Florence and one from Siena when the rooster sing 
Oh. Ikiriki in the morning, okay? So the rooster of Flor of, of uh, Siena was a very peaceful rooster. Was a white rooster. Was a very he have a food, he have a drink, he sleep, he sleep a lot, <laughs> and so very, very, very easy. That's funny. Uh, but the rooster of Florence was a black rooster. Florentine people, yeah. smart. They have uh, no food, no, no drinking, yeah, nothing. Rough, they are yeah. very hungry. He sing in the at three o'clock yeah. in the morning, very, very early in the morning. So the rooster of Florence, of Florence, r sing early, and the and the chevalier, the the the, the, horse, went first. the horse start first, and arrive very far away, <laughs> and it is, is so very funny. far away, and so the the land of Florence is much, in Chiadi is much, much bigger. bigger. <laughs> <laughs> that is very. Yeah, I've never heard that story. Yeah, We've yeah. been to Siena too, but yeah. I, uh, that's a great story. Yeah, it's a good story, and that's it. Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, it's been a fabulous conversation, Alessandro, to have you here, and I look forward to uh, I look forward to this place right here. Hey, come, and and <laughs> come and check it out. Salute Thank you for joining. I hope you have a great visit. You're here for a few more days, or what's your story? A yeah, few, more, few, one day more, and I have a tour uh, in the east. That's uh, hard work. Do, yeah, yeah. No, oh, yeah, it's fabulous. Not that, it's not that hard. Ah, it's it's right. a, it, we we do one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Salute. Cheers. 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 Cheers.